off we go. This is that question four on the, the uh, summer 2008 paper or something from Core One. And uh, this is the stealth quadratic hidden in the middle of the paper. Um, what we need to do there is, is to spot. We spot a stealth quadratic by looking for it. It's going to be the three terms. And if you look at the unknown terms, one of the power of one of them is going to be twice the power of the other. And that's the key thing to look for. If the power of one term is twice the power of the other one. Now the smaller power is the middle term. And the one that's twice it is the, the squared term. And this is, this is kind of a classic one because the squared term is just a single x. And that can be confusing. All you do straight away, you want to turn this into the kind of quadratic you're more comfortable with. So you spot where that pattern is, look for the, the smaller one, and make a substitution. Now, I, I, it doesn't matter what letter you use. Some people might use a big X. I like using the letter T, but you can use any letter you like. And so we're going to replace the middle term with that single letter. If that's what we've done, then t squared, well, if you square x to the half, you get x. So t squared is just x. So before we've done anything else, we're now going to rewrite this equation we're supposed to solve as being 2t squared minus 7t plus 3 <coughs> is equal to 0. And I've only just said it, but of quadratics all over the place, factorising them, and factorising ones where the number in front of the squared term isn't 1. Again, actually, this could be an awful lot worse, because we've got a prime number at the start and a prime number at the end. So we could probably put it straight into brackets. We know it's going to be 1, it's going to be t and 2t, it's going to be 1 and 3, we don't know quite where they're going to go, there's not many options. Or, just because I, I, I like it, we'll do that, that method where we multiply first and last things. This time, we get 6t squared out of it. Uh, we say what multiplies together to give plus 6 and adds together to give minus 7. Well, that, that should be quite easy, shouldn't it? What's it going to be? 6 and 1. It's going to have to be negative for both of them. That would work, wouldn't it? That multiplies to give plus 6t squared and adds to give minus 7t. So we write it out. We've got 2t squared minus 6t minus t plus 3 is 0. We factorise two terms at a time. The first two terms, we have a common factor of um, 2t, t minus 3. It's a little bit deceptive what's going on here. The, the second two terms, in order to get the bracket to match up, we actually have a common factor of minus 1 that we need to bring out of that. But you see we've got the two brackets matching up. T, t minus 3 times 2t minus 1 is 0. Now we're certainly not done yet with this. We've concluded that t is 3 or t is a half, but the question isn't about t, we just introduced that as our own variable to make it easier. The question is all about x. So looking back, we said that t was equal to x to the half. So x to the half equals 3, and x to the half equals a half. A power of a half, we started doing this today, says that that's the square root. So the question is telling us that the square root of x is 3. What do you square root to get an answer of 3? It's 9. What do you square root to get an answer of a half? And it's a quarter, isn't it? We need to square that. And they are our answers for that one. Okay? I, I, I'm going to keep saying it, quadratics is such an important thing that we can factorise them and get through there with confidence. Great.